Hey everyone, we are finally back today with yet another short tutorial video in the series. I know it's been a pretty long time since our last video, but well, the short story is basically, I guess I'd say that multiple things just really got away from me over this past year, in part due to my wife getting sick with COVID and then my dad having a heart attack and just, well, you know, uh, just general COVID times, hardships and all that, which honestly really set me back on some of the important goals that I had set out for us to accomplish in 2020. Thankfully, I've gotten mostly caught up on everything at this point. However, that's not to say that all of my priorities have been lagging far behind. I'm pleased to say that I've also been donating a lot of my time and focus over the last several months to work on the development of the latest version of OpenFL, which was just released very recently. I'm super proud of my work with the OpenFL version 9.1, and I sure hope You'll all check it out if you haven't had the chance to do so already. Um, I added two new classes to the net package that you might be familiar with already called Datagram Socket and Server Socket, which provide built-in support for UDP and server networking for native targets. I also addressed the poor performance of text field by implementing a shape caching system, which gave us massive, and I mean really massive performance gains. Uh, we also added uh, a new text selection scrolling feature um, that now allows scrolling of fields via mouse selection. Uh, we added text alignment fixes, plus I was able to introduce a small change that moderately improved tile container rendering performance and just tons of other miscellaneous fixes. I also really, really appreciate creator Joshua Granick. Um, fellow contributor, MSG Hero, and everyone else who helped with the latest release. So yeah, uh, today's video is going to be pretty short, and it doesn't actually cover a full chapter. In fact, I guess I'd call it chapter 1.1. Um, now let's think back to the, the last video we looked at installing hacks, OpenFL, and Lime in Windows. Uh, using Hacks Develop IDE, and I mentioned that I would cover more popular mainstream IDEs like VS Code and uh, IntelliJ IDEA. So today we are going to look at setting up our environment and building a Hello World example with just VS Code. And then later this week, I'll also include a similar video for setting up Hacks and OpenFL with IntelliJ. Um, now, while I'm going to go through the whole process from start to finish like I did in the last video, I will be speeding through the process of installing Hacks OpenFL and all the dependencies with uh, little to no commentary until we get to VS Code. If you want a more detailed explanation of installing Hacks and OpenFL on your system and compiling for targets like Windows, CPP, uh, go back and watch the first video in the series. Um, I, I think I broke that down pretty pretty good. Uh, and, and it's not necessarily dependent on Hacks Develop. Uh, I know a lot of people have had a hard time trying to get their environment successfully set up with VS Code, and hopefully over just a few minutes, I'll be able to demystify the entire process and show everyone just how simple it really is. Uh, keep in mind that this is a clean installation of Windows, so we're going to set up everything from scratch. If you're just here for the VS Code segment, you can just skip ahead right now. Um, the first thing I'm going to do here is install Hacks and then Hackslib, Lime, OpenFL really quick. And once again, if, if you need a breakdown of this process, uh, go check out the last video. Alright, the first thing we're going to do here is install Hacks really quick. Hacks is not harmful for your computer folks.
All right, now that we have all of our hacks and OpenFL dependencies set up, let's go ahead and get Visual Studio. Alright, let's go ahead and get MSVC. We've got the Windows 10 SDK. Looks like we've got everything we need. Okie doke. All right, so now we can go ahead and install VS Code if you haven't already. Now the nice thing about VS Code is that it's cross-platform. Not to mention all the other bells and whistles. Um, go ahead and open that up. Accept. Install. Now that we've downloaded, installed, and run VS Code, um, if you hadn't had the chance, you can go ahead and look at the Getting Started page. Let's go to our Extensions view, and we'll need to install the Hacks extension. Simply search for Hacks, Install, now we need the Lime extension, install, all right, um, let's go ahead and create a new project folder, let's call it example, all right, we are going to go ahead and open our command prompt, we're going to type in openfl, 
create project. Um, try again our file path here. All right. Go ahead and look at that. Our project file has been created automatically. So now we can go back into VS Code, open folder, select folder. All right, allow access for the comp compilation server. Uh, doo -doo. Create and launch a JSON file. We're gonna select Lime. And now we can build our project here. Source main. Let's go ahead and check that out. Trace hello world. Go back to our run and debug view. We have lime selected. Down here we can select the target. Let's go ahead and select HTML5, it was already selected. Debugging HTML requires the debugger for Chrome extension. Install now. Oh, well, it's because I forgot a semicolon. How about that? Well, access. Well, let's go ahead and install Chrome really quick. All right, we have Chrome. Let's go ahead and run it again. Inspect. Here's a trace statement. Here's a trace statement. And there you have it. Um, let's go ahead and change our target. We should be able to build to Windows. Requires a hack CPP debugger. Install now. Very simple. Very simple, everyone. All right, we're going to go ahead and build Windows again. There we go, folks. All right. <clears throat> so it really was just that simple. Uh, you should be able to get set up with VS Code just as easily as uh, just as easily as you can get set up with Hacks Develop or even IntelliJ is pretty simple, and we'll go over that in our next video. Um, as always, uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, give me a subscribe and a like, and uh, we'll see you next time.